In the world of pop culture, there are personalities and legends, and then there are people that change the way we look at the world. Mark Echo is one of these icons, and this is the story of how he pulled it off. He sold you the shirt on your back. All right, man. I'm Mark. Good to see you, man. And learned how to run his company by any means necessary. I never took no personally. I took it as a way to say, well, what am I doing wrong? Determination and street smarts turned his company into a phenomenon. Obviously now it's massive. Echo, echo, echo. We look at him as uh, the cultural navigator for the next generation of young men. Echo's empire would also confront the establishment. This game absolutely encourages graffiti. What's the hip hop kid that's too fat to break dance and can't rap going to do? Giving T-shirts away or selling them two for twenty, one for ten. De La Soul to Tupac to whoever would take them. This is the story of a maverick that didn't know how to quit and never took no for an answer. Mark Echo, icon. This is my current office. No big deal. That was pretty lame. That arrogant, like I was gonna make it shot, and you miss it. Right, let's go check out the old office. Hello, hello. And uh, I did this this 20th anniversary line with Spike Lee. All like costume stuff, like from his old movies. You know, like this is like a replica from the movie uh, School Days. I collect a lot of vinyl toys and Star Wars stuff, so this is my digs. While the Star Wars memorabilia on display at his 250,000 square foot headquarters is reported to have cost tens of thousands of dollars, as a kid, Mark just had chutzpah. To understand how Mark Milikovsky became Mark Echo, you need to go back a ways to the womb. Mark's twin sister, Marcy, explains. It's a funny story. My mom was um, pregnant with us. She would um, complain to the doctor that she would feel kicking, and the doctor would just say, oh, it's nothing, it's just the fluids, you know, it's the echo of the fluids. I was born in August 29th, 1972. She delivered me. And then the doctor asked for a second nurse, and she was like, is this baby coming in parts? And he's like, no, here comes your echo. And it stuck with him. As the son of two real estate agents in Jersey, Mark was exposed to graffiti and urban culture, and the suburban Jewish kid fell hard for it. I remember going into Trenton to visit my cousin, and we, like we would every holiday season, seeing the trains and all the graffiti on it. And then going into Manhattan and some of the boroughs to visit family and asking my father and my mother about all those brightly colored trains that I saw painted. Not too long after that, my dad got me a book called Subway Art. Kind of like a photo essay on a New York-centric subway culture. And that book was hugely influential for me. He was always drawing. We grew up in a very eclectic community where there was a lot of Hispanic and black in our school. So graffiti and hip hop was very prevalent. Mark would have like these big bubble letters with like shadowing. And he was five or six years old doing it. It was crazy. I was completely enamored with the culture and certainly as a white kid that was too fat to break dance and I certainly wasn't gonna rap. Graffiti really was kind of my invitation to hip hop and being accepted in, in a really diverse and eclectic uh, social circle. I just was drawn to it. It was something that really affected me forever. 
early on seeing some of his stuff on t-shirts, like airbrush stuff on shirts. So we followed him from the very beginning. It has a deep root in graffiti. The first time I ever saw anything Echo related was in 1994 at a trade show in San Diego. I was definitely curious about what was going on with Echo because the products looked good. Mark parlayed his art into cash, lots of it. I pretty much went from being the amateur kid who loved graphic art and illustration and then was doing this full to part-time illustration service. And that was kind of how I became known as like the guy that would do your denim hookup or your sweatshirt or I paint your fingernails, your car, your, your shoes, didn't even matter. If you wanted to paint it, I was the dude to do it. Mark went off to Rutgers University to pursue a career in drugs but it wasn't meant to be. I decided in my third year of pharmacy school that I was gonna be leaving. Mark drafted his twin sister, Marcy, and the company was born. Mark gave me a call and he's like, we're gonna start a clothing company. And I'm thinking like, okay, what does that mean? And I knew he was airbrushing t-shirts in the garage as he had done since we were teenagers. He's like, I'm gonna send you something. A t-shirt, an Echo Unlimited t-shirt. And I was like, What's your plans, you know? What is your strategy? The way that I got interested in Mark Echo was seeing that Rhino logo on a lot of people on the street because its popularity was growing sort of in lockstep with a number of entrepreneurs and performers and artists in the hip-hop world. And Michael Bivens from New Edition had formed a group called Belle Biv DeVoe. Yeah, I just came off of our big smash hit, Poison. Poison! And we were headlining MTV's first ever summer tour. So I was airbrushing denim jackets, and I was really good at it. And my older sister, Shari, went to the show. Just seen this pretty girl trying to get my attention as we was performing. And I was wondering, you know, what is it that she wants? So I kind of bent over and... She handed him the jacket on stage. She said, please, take this jacket. So I took the jacket. And about 3 o'clock in the morning, I get a phone call. I'll never forget the call. I was like, yo, this Mark? Yes. This is Biv. This is Michael Bivens. I'm like, <gasps> I said, thank you. And it was, it was special because it was a hot coat at that time. Like, that was the shit. Like, Bell Biv DeVoe was the shit. I mean, they had hits, right? Today, the Echo brand is a staple for many celebrities. Mark's known for years that free clothing for the right people would translate into free advertising. It's a philosophy he's embraced since the very beginning. I'd get word of mouth on it. Spike Lee, I've become friends with Spike. I've done business with Spike. Chuck D, Q-Tip. Echo was on the cusp of success, but suddenly disaster struck. I got a cease and desist letter from a company called um, Echo Design Group. For us, it was the end of the world. We were, you know, Mark and I were like, okay, we're done. How can you run a business if you can't use your name? Mark's company was stripped of the Echo name and it was bleeding cash. Yeah, I think you would get totally bug out on it. What else could go wrong for upstart designer Mark Echo? Answers ahead on Icons. Icons. You're watching Icons, Mark Echo. Only on G4. We now return to Icons. Mark Echo. Only on G4. On his way to becoming a fashion icon, struggling entrepreneur Mark Echo was up to his ass in debt and in a fight to keep the brand name Echo Unlimited. Today he's swimming in cash, but the hours are killer. A typical day is I leave at about 5.50 and I go to the gym, work out for a couple hours. By the time I'm showered and chilled out, had my food, my day starts at around 10 a.m. I come to work, I'll come into the office, do a tour for all the design, Ooh. And marketing's being done for Echo Unlimited, all the core Rhino brands. In terms of return on investment and cost to do it and quality control, I think it was good. The hair was a bit of a nightmare. And I have the luxury of being able to manage my company in a way where I could kind of just walk around and do drive-bys. It's the latest. Everything good? Yeah, we're starting to work on spring. Good. We're ready to go your products, you know. All good. Keep them posted. I really allow my managers to own their projects, own the success. Two girls in a shoe, not, nothing to be mad at. Vans will like that, they'll be happy. 
Echo's current vision is to transform an old time square theater into the flagship Echo store and the coolest retail space in New York. The entrance is here, but it's a run down old theater. It's a, a really, really exciting space. The last occupant actually showed um, Kung Fu movies. So it was really big in the hip hop culture in the early 90s. And we're starting to do some restoration, as you can see. We've had experts come through this space and said, you guys are crazy. The task of trying to make this theater a retail space, and actually the vision to do that, it's a challenge. And it's, it's, but it's going to be amazing when it gets done. Echo's got the deep pockets to renovate the theater, a far cry from 1998, when a simple cease and desist threatened his company's existence. We came to a summit where we actually changed the spelling of the name of Echo, so he was able to keep his name. The spelling change was only part of the Echo brand's identity crisis. If you think of the big players, they don't even have to say their names. They have icons that stand for that. If it's the swoosh that says Nike or the polo horse that just screams Ralph Lauren. Mark was inspired by an old makeshift Star Wars toy from his childhood. I go back home to trusty old Lakewood, off the garage where I painted for years. But on the shelf was this little collection of these sand drift rhinos. And I remembered playing with them as my tauntaun. And my tauntaun was the rhino. I just put Luke on top and I kicked Han's ass or whatever. I thought the rhino was, was a really good icon. It was really recognizable. Every time you saw it, you thought of Echo. The Echo brand was finally defined with the birth of the Rhino, but the company was in a deep hole. When at the age of 26, Mark failed to interest Levi's, Nautica, and Perry Ellis in retail deals. I managed to get myself in about $6 million in debt. You know, when you're young and you're in that kind of debt, it's a very, very scary place to be. When they go to run the check in the bank, and I would, you know, lick over and scrub out those those numbers and those bars, it would add an additional sometimes 30 days to processing that check. Everyone that would counsel me from my, my accountants to my lawyers would say, you're bankrupt. Just like do it and get it over, over with. Face the pain and you won't have to look back. We were just too stubborn. And I went around the country just trying to find anyone that was willing to buy the company. What I learned is that none of those people were smarter than us. None of them worked harder than us. We ended up not selling the company, and it was the best thing that ever happened. One last loan from a family connection and agreements from Bloomingdale's and Macy's to carry Echo brand clothing took Mark's rhino off the endangered species list. All the years of failing and failing and failing and the debt, the rhino took on more meaning. It was survivor. It's the only four-legged animal that doesn't walk backwards, which is kind of cool. In 1998, sales ballooned from 15 to 36 million. In the 18 months that follow, Echo manages to pay off all his creditors. Finally, Echo Unlimited is stable, and Mark is planning new battles and moving in new directions, both inside and outside the clothing industry. Let's try something different. Ah! Echo Unlimited sets its sights on publishing and video games, and Mark wages the toughest fight of his career and goes mano a mano with the New York City Council when Icons returns. Icons. You are watching Icons, Mark Echo, only on G4. We now return to Icons, Mark Echo, only on G4. By 2001, Mark Echo's trademark Rhino Apparel was selling in malls worldwide. Always eager to branch out, Mark founded the urban lifestyle magazine, Complex. That's a pretty good way for Mark to continue to get his name out there because, of course, he has the editor's note in at every issue. He really saw it as a nod to the great magazines of the 60s, like the old Esquire and the old Playboy. It's kind of like MTV Cribs, the magazine, where you have the people profiles and personalities on one side of the magazine, and then you flip it over, and then there's the products on the other side. We launched this magazine three and a half years ago, and we're profitable already. You know what would be nice is to go back in and camp up off the metal, mm -hmm. like get little like sparkles. Well, yeah, like... One thing that I love about Mark is he takes a leadership role in defining what is going to go on and then getting involved in helping it push the marketplace towards that. Mark Echo is now a successful magazine publisher with the bi-monthly men's lifestyle and fashion magazine Complex with a circulation of 400,000 per issue. Once again, Mark recast himself in a familiar role. 
The Rookie, this time in the video game world. It's almost this, this predisposition to hate, you know, an outsider. What does a guy making sweatshirts know about making games? You know, I just grin and bear it. I never took no personally. It's probably been about eight or nine years ago that Mark started to do his own work on a game. Mark's game, Getting Up, Contents Under Pressure, is about his lifelong love affair, graffiti. He had just the right idea at the right time for Atari. So I think just on the strength of uh, timing, good fortune, luck, and a good idea, all those things married gave us the opportunity with Atari, and that's where my break really happened. Echo found the right publisher and went right to the source of graffiti culture for the game's content. There was a good five to six months of the development of all the graffiti in the game. Trying to track down 70 different graffiti artists it was not easy. And once the big names, the Shepherd Fairies and the Futuras, once they all got on board, then everybody wanted to be in the game. When I found out about Mark wanting to do the Getting Up game, I was intrigued really seal my place in pop culture graffiti history to be in the game was a way to do that i was excited mark is putting out a game about graffiti i gotta be part of that man so i, I jumped on it gaming as a medium i've always been in love with one of the cool things of coming up in the 80s was we were really the first generation to really have this digital pastime and this digital kind of entertainment experience. Coming up, an uninvited guest crashes Mark's party. Graffiti is, is absolutely a gateway crime. Echo faces his toughest test yet when he's dragged into a street fight with the New York City Council. And Mark punks the President of the United States when he tags his ride when Icons returns. Watching Icons, Mark Echo, only on G4. G4. We now return to Icons, Mark Echo, only on G4. With Echo brand clothing ringing up more than half a billion in sales every year and Complex Magazine turning a profit, Mark turned his attention to promoting his foray into video games, Getting Up. His plan required a simple permit from the city of New York. I had worked with the city to gain permits to paint live a graffiti exposition of aerosol art on fake facades of subway cars, 48 feet long, 8 feet high. Getting Up's promotional street party drew the scorn of publicity-seeking local politicians. Echo was front-page news, but could he come out a winner? There's a councilman, Peter Vallone, and Peter Vallone was pretty outspoken about graffiti. He came out against the video game. It also destroys a neighborhood. Nothing makes a neighborhood, a good neighborhood look bad like graffiti. And this game absolutely encourages graffiti. Nope. I think that graffiti is a legitimate form of free speech and expression. Mark Echo has a lot of power too. So the city government can just intimidate someone and it was great that Mark's able to stand up to them because he can hire good lawyers and he has a good PR firm and he can combat being vilified for spreading the graffiti. The city tried to scrub Echo's graffiti exhibition. And about six weeks before the event, the city reaches out to us and tells us that, look, you clearly have a commercial motivation. So we have to charge you instead of $1,000 for the permit, 10000 the 10000 goes to 25000 I sued uh, the city. What they ended up doing is they finally revoked the permit. And I got an injunction from the judge, kind of just laughed it out of court, saying it was infringing upon our First Amendment rights. And we ended up uh, back at the original $1,000 fee. It was hugely successful. Getting Up is yet another success in a new medium for Mark Echo. Take this and that. What's his secret? I tell people it's not what I do or what I say, it's how I make people feel with the work that I do. Is my brand making you feel something? Life has come full circle, and at 34, Mark Echo is back in the Jersey suburbs. You know, now that I'm a father, I've got a couple young kids at home and a wife, 
that I'd like to have some, you know, time with, it becomes more difficult. You know, I try to make up for it by tying in family vacations or some kind of getaways, you know, with my travel. Echo clothes hang in your closet, Complex Magazine is in your mailbox, and getting up is in your Xbox. What else is there for Mark Echo to conquer? You guessed it. The great American dream. Movies. I'm off to uh, Paramount Studios and the team over at MTV Films who have bought the rights to make the film adaptation of the game. And Mark Echo is proof that one can maintain their integrity and be financially successful. If we're going to truly be a unique lifestyle brand and we want to do something bold and daring and different, we can't just exist in this box that the consumer and really the retailer are used to putting us. We have to break down the walls. The latest wall Mark broke down was the one protecting Air Force One. He staged a hoax that faked everyone into thinking the presidential plane was tagged still free. The stunt drew attention to the free speech issue surrounding graffiti and, of course, put Mark Echo back on the front page. Mark Echo is one of those rare icons whose path helps steer modern pop culture. Only Mark knows which adventurous new direction he'll head next. But like his company's rhino, he'll always be moving forward and finding a way to survive. To hear more music from the artists featured on Icons, go to g4tv.com slash icons.